All right. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Chrome Dome. Uh, those of you who do know me probably know me from the Dancer Project. Um, and I'm here to talk to you today about building a better README for your project. Um, your README sucks. <laughs> there, I said it. OK, more fairly, it probably doesn't suck. But it can always be better. And I'm hoping that by the end of this talk, you'll pick up a couple of ways in which you can. Um, let's do something about it together. Um, but first, I want to show you some really good examples from 1999. <laughs> but I, I think painting a picture of the way that we've always done readmes is kind of helpful for understanding how it is that we can do them better. Um, so this is RT, Request Tracker. I think most of you are familiar with rt.cpan.org. Um, my employer, Best Practical, um, makes the software. And until recently, we had this as our project's README. Um, <laughs> um, don't necessarily need to know the details of it. I guess the point that I'm trying to make is it is really hard to read. The text is very tiny. Um, it's, it's not very approachable. It's, it's, it's very dense and hard to process. As another example, let's consider what dancers look like until very recently. Much easier to read, but it reads kind of like a man page, which isn't the most marketable thing. And that's probably because, it, in all for all intents and purposes, it's Perl doc converted to Markdown. And the best one of all, the projects with no README. Um, which is not helpful to anyone for any reason. Um, in all fairness, I inherited this project, but uh, it still serves as a really good example of probably what you don't want to do. Okay. So what is it that a README should do? Um, this is a very non-complete list. But in general, um, your README should sell a potential user on your project. Um, a consumer comes to your project on GitHub looking to fill a need. And it's your README's job to tell them what, what need your project fills and how it does so better than other options. Other good uses of your README, how to install your project, how to use it, where to go for help, how it's licensed, because for a lot of people, that is extremely important. Um, and the one that I find most important, giving thanks. Um, most of our projects, many of our projects, um, are reliant on volunteers. And using a README and making it so that people can see who's contributed in a very public way I think it goes a long way in explaining the type of project that it is that you're selling and marketing. Unfortunately, we suck at sales <laughs> and marketing. And by we, I mean developers. More specifically, I mean Perl developers. We are, <laughs> I don't think this should come as a surprise to anyone here in this room. We are not really good at selling ourselves in a positive way. If you want people to use your software, you have to be able to sell it. Um, for many open source projects, uh, GitHub is your project's front door. And what people see when they go there, it should be engaging, it should be compelling, and it should be inviting. Boring landing pages lose new users. So let's give them a reason to stay. Um, and what follows are a couple of better examples of readmes and some tips and tricks for improving your project's readme. So without further ado, show me the readme. <laughs> so here are some better examples. And again, we come back to Request Tracker. Through version 505, we had the one that you saw. Recent versions of Request Tracker have a much different README. 
And I think this comes across a lot better than our old one did. First of all, it's readable. I don't have to blow up the font for it to be read even in the middle of the room. We have a couple of different navigation links here with additional information about the project, which I'll come back to. Got a really nice, attractive logo to catch people's attention. Got a one-line summary that says very succinctly, what is this? Some links to some helpful information. A more detailed synopsis about what RT is. And then finally, we got this really nice screenshot to capture people's attention. And then it goes on from there with much of the same information presented in a more friendly way. What's required, how to install it, how to find help, what to do if you find a security problem, and some license information. And some other things that GitHub has allowed us to do, sorry, we've got the special link that tells people what the license of request tracker is. And we've got this other special tab that shows what to do in the case you find a security issue. Dancer most recently does a lot of these same things. We've got tabs to different parts of our project information, including a new one, Code of Conduct. Um, we've got a logo, a very short synopsis about what this is, links to helpful information, and we've got the synopsis here, which is the very, a very short, succinct example of how can you use this. And if I were walking into a project in another language, I would find this really, really compelling. This is easy to get going with. But we still have a lot of the same information just presented in a more friendly way. Got a documentation index, what to do for security, how to get support, and most importantly, who's helped us? Our thanks to everybody who's contributed to our project. In Stronghold, I have no affiliation with. It's just another project that I found that is a really good example. And what I like about this is we have, um, we've got a logo at the top, but we've got an animated image showing what this project looks like as it's being used. Again, very much the same information, very short and very succinct. Some important things to remember, know your audience. One size does not fit all. Um, some readmes might need to be very technically dense. Others just need to be a really gentle overview. And you, as the project founder or maintainer, have to use some judgment here and see what is gonna come across best to potential users of my software. Um, the one thing that I can say is that a good synopsis goes a long way and put a lot of thought and effort into that because a really good example of how to use it is really going to hook somebody. How can GitHub help? Um, the most obvious one is use Markdown. Yes, there are tools that will convert your pod to Markdown. Um, don't be lazy. Um, because what works well for a manual page is not the best, is not your best effort for selling your project. Spend some time, make it look pretty. Um, there's the tab helpers on GitHub, making it easy for people to find critical information about your project. Um, create a security.md file and post your security policy there. Uh, post your code of conduct with the code of conduct markdown file. Um, create a license file. And if GitHub can actually recognize your license, it will not only show that there's a license, but the tab header will actually show you what license is it, GPL v2, the Apache license, BSD. Um, and the other thing that really helps you is search. If you write your readme well enough, 
you will show up very highly on the search results in GitHub, making it easier for people to find a solution to the problem that they have. Um, GitLab, GitT, Bitbucket probably has a lot of these tools. I just can't speak from experience because I don't use them. So a few easy takeaways. Add a logo or a screenshot, and you're already 90% better than most projects on GitHub. Fair warning, I just totally made that stat up off the top of my head. Um, <laughs> again, use Markdown. Don't be lazy. Use the tab helpers. Just a couple of other quick examples. There's this nice CLI utility, attractive logo, nice little animation to show you how it looks when you're using it, and a quick list of features and how to get going with it. Um, some other resources, I highly recommend the awesome README project on GitHub. It's got a lot of examples of good Readmes, the curated list, but it's also got some helpful articles on how to write a good README and some tools for helping you construct a better README. And there's a starter template that you can find on GitHub as well. Any questions? Mm -hmm. um, it depends on your project. Oh, um, so the question is, where do the badges on some of these readmes come from, and do they actually help your project? And my answer to that is, it depends. Um, <laughs> again, it's kind of a know your audience thing. So if um, if you're pushing a framework for, for building a certain type of application, people might like to see immediately that it meets a certain quality rating or that all the tests are passing in continuous integration. And for those things, it, it is really helpful. For other projects, your potential customers and users may not find, um, may not find benefit in having that information. Um, so yes, the it's the classic answer. It depends. <laughs> yes? In your opinion, what should not go? <laughs> um, I think, oh, the, the question is, um, in my opinion, what shouldn't go into a README? Um, I think most Readmes go way too far into the weeds. And so you're trying to hook people, not overwhelm them. And so I like the approach of less is more. Um, so don't put, put just enough to keep them interested and to hook their attention, but not so much that their eyes glaze over. Question? What uh, made you realize this gets down to um, yes, repeating the question, what got me interested in this? Um, that's a really good question, actually, that I haven't thought a lot about. But um, just seeing other readmes, and as I have looked for projects on GitHub, seeing how how colorful and how easy and how approachable some of these other pages were. And it's like, well, huh? Yes. <laughs> and, and I come from a world of, you know, just show me the man page or just show me all, show me all the detail all at once so I don't have to go looking for it. Um, and the more of these projects that I saw, it really just kind of reframed my opinion as to what needs to be there when somebody finds your project. Question. So, I feel like uh, I understand why you would very much want to put a But, I thought it was interesting you said, A, the readme is about the book and all the right, that kind of thing, like that. And then also B, that the most 
most important thing in the region is the and uh, I I agree. Like I, I feel like I don't disagree in any way. But like I think I, I would just love to, to hear your thoughts if you have any ideas. Like those seem in conflict somehow. Oh, um, so the question is. Why, if I think that the list of contributors is most important, but the purpose of the project is to, to the purpose of the readme is to sell your project, um, can I reconcile the differences between those? Um, I would argue that giving credit to people is going to make more people interested in your project because it shows that the people that run this project care. Yes. So I noticed among the example you show, and we all experience that on a daily basis, even if you have the best readme ever, if you have a lot of source code above, you will have to scroll a lot of pages before starting with that beautiful readme. Mm -hmm. On some projects, like trying to run around this by simply adding a single folder or shorter, uh, shorten your, your tweet to make sure that the readme is showing it above, and you have like that direction, or use the GitHub page, or, or your code somewhere else. Um, so the, I think the question is: sometimes you've got a lot of code to show, and sometimes it pushes all of the copy and other content too far down. And what to do about that? Um, I'm not saying that you can't show lots of code on your readme, because sometimes that's the audience you want. But I would say find the way to make the most simple example that illustrates what your project can do. I do not mean code. code. I mean your tree, your source code, your browser oh. your code can be so long that you might have to scroll pages before starting. Ah, OK, OK, I got you. I don't have a good solution to that yet, unfortunately. Where the file list is so long, which is the content. Yeah, yeah, you could do that. You could make a folder and move all of your code to the folder. So you've got a very short list of files, and your readme content is right there. One trick that you can use, though, is if, if you're linking to your GitHub project, you can put pound readme at the end of the URL, and it will skip the file list and go directly to the top of the readme. Question? Awesome. Um, not that I have found. Um, question, question being, um, we agree the contributor list is very important. We have a tool that can put them automatically into pod. Is there something that does it for Markdown? I don't have one, unfortunately. What was? Maybe? I hadn't thought about using the badges. One last question? Okay. Um, Julian was pointing out that um, GitHub does help you a little bit by showing um, a small summary of your contributors on the right hand side of the page. Um, and if they have profile pictures, it does show them there. Thank you very much, everybody.